Good morning. Creativity and innovation are used as synonyms, you know. Sometimes we say creativity, sometimes we say innovation. What is the basic difference if you look at and how do we go and how do we see? This will be my theme. Creativity is identified with new vision going beyond the constraints. In fact, that is the hallmark of creativity and art really harnesses creativity. This is a major component in creative thinking and today issues of art has come, you know, design has come, design schools have come, craft was talked about, but what are the links? Finally, where we are going to link with the institutes and what we build? All of you are familiar, you know, the paints were thrown and even now people will laugh at, oh, this only paints thrown. But that is what is Jackson Pollock brought and he made it an art. Because you need guts to throw paint and make a painting. Because otherwise everybody has ideas, everybody is creative. So what makes a creative person is creative is internal growth to see it as an art, a process, an art. This is a part of the creativity and this is an important thing for us. Sunset, suddenly the sky became blood and I felt the breath of sadness. I stopped, leaned against the fence, deathly tired, clouds over the fog, dripped, reeking with blood. My friends went on but I just stood trembling with an open mind. In my breast, trembling with anxiety, I heard a huge extraordinary scream pass through the nature. This is what he said about when he painted this. So, scream, when you see how it has come, it's also an art, it's an expression, you know. So, the creativity, in some sense, harnesses these things. When, when we come to design, we'll see how further it comes. Then came things like modern art and Brancusi, where this he calls a bird. Now, it's totally different vision of creativity, which sees a bird into a three-dimensional form. So, this is where the art harnesses creativity in very ways and it breaks boundaries and brings new things. Now here if we come to design training, when we call designers, when we train people to learn creativity is constraints. So it is not only that freedom of the mind that everybody has got. See, designers, nobody is a monopoly for creativity. I think everybody is creative, so everybody can harness. What is happening is probably the streams we take, if you become an engineer, maybe it is not recognized as a very important element. Whereas when you come to the design, it becomes an important. If you're an art, it is completely left to you to harness your creativity. Now here, when you come to design, we start working with constraints. This is a simple exercise we give a you know, flower in a square. This was a theme taken, nine students come with the different expressions. Now, this is where creativity we are harnessing, we are developing in the person. So there are constraints, the interpretations, what is a square, how is a flower in a square, you see the flower. See, otherwise, if you ask children to flower, they may have some imaginations, but you see the flower, and we duplicate, imitate, it limits to that. Then here comes a language which we are introducing, space language, design elements of visual, all comes into design training. I think this is where the design training becomes very important. How to be creative with constraints. This is a language. Then when you come to the products, I'll give another example. There was a Sony design competition sometime back, way back in 91 or so. The letter forms were given to students and we students were working for a telephone design for a future. And then we were going for one week, we were taking, gathering a lot of data, this and all that, nothing was coming out. I put an arbitrary constraint that everybody has to take a letter form and convert into a design. This is a very arbitrary constraint. Now, I'll show you just a few examples. Telephone. Now, how did this idea come? Because there was a constraint, but there is a skill developed to translate this constraint into a three-dimensional form. This is, is something about design. See, design is not only creativity, but how to translate that creativity within given constraints, within the here constraints of three-dimensionality, constraint of the operationality, some form, but it's a completely new idea. So the brief given was 
technology is free. They can give any technology what we want. Second was, this was uh, Nuprita earlier. These were the students. Then the Satyendra Pakale, you now he is very celebrity designer. This was a Siddham letter Hreem, which he converted into a telephone. Then there is a Tamil letter O, which became a very peculiar form because one would not easily think of this form as a telephone. And this became a very creative solution. Now he got the award, Salim, and because in this it is not only the form, but the way it is used was appreciated because instead of headphones at that time, these things came. This was way back in 91, 92. So what we are seeing is a lot of things we saw creativity. We could call them innovated innovations. And there are innovative products. We can have a lot of ideas, growth, all that. But I feel innovation is somehow associated with execution. If till it's executed, there will remain ideas and concepts and development. This is what we train the designers. But I think innovation should be seen as something to do with the inno execution and something which adds value in the society, which will continue. So this is where the innovation gets more defined into a shape rather than just a creative uh, output. Now, let's see innovation in the organized sector. What happens? See, I think also creative innovation is, you know, associated with power. Like Mao Zedong said, you know, power comes of the barrel of a gun. I don't know, if you do not have power, you can have hundreds of ideas. Nobody cares. So what kind of power? Is it intellectual power? If you have, maybe you will get through. Or if you have, you know, financial power, you control the companies. Look at the Sony Walkman. The president gets a bright idea. No, it should, there should be a product like that. So people accept and translate it. Whole teams are there. But I get an idea. It may not, you know, I may have a wonderful idea, but it may not go further. But you need several steps. I think this is some of the problems of the design institutes because we are in that zone where we do not have that much power many times. So wherever we get a chance and as a partners and this thing, we are able to push. Now, one of the tasks for us will be to how we bring that power zone into this or how we enter into the power zone. <coughs> Tata Nano is another example when people are talking about, you know, why iPhone only come from abroad and all that. See, India thinks will come. It has come. Like Nano is a fantastic product, which is international competition it could give. But how it comes, because it has come from the top. Look at our missiles and all that. We deliver very well. But we are given a mandate and we are given a power to a group to deliver. Then it comes. Without that, you know, you have to evolve. That's what Sam Petro has been telling. You know, you evolve yourself. Go and, you know, I remember Sam Petro, how he went and got, you know, with Indira Gandhi, he made meetings and because he was coming from Chicago with innovations, that's why they will listen to him. If I go from somewhere from the village, nobody will listen to you. Even if you go from IIT many times, they won't listen to you. So this is the problem. You know, there is a power game and then you have to enter into power structures. Maybe we'll have to think of innovative solutions to create a platform for influencing that powers. We'll come to that. Now, we did one electronic voting machine. The product innovation was Bharat Electronics. It's a completely new product in, in the conceived by the R&D, initially Bell R&D, and not from just necessarily top man, maybe at a lab level, maybe ch chief of lab, one person, Sujata with pen name, Ranganathan, he was uh, created for that idea. But design innovations, we did because we got into it. So there is sometimes a confusion A design innovations will become a part of the overall innovations. So overall innovation is at the levels of, you know, a structure, technology, the you know whole setup may be political. If you took at the voting machine, it was highly supported by Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone through. So we will work for ten years, and in spite of that, after it was made, it was not introduced in the country for ten years because of the political reasons. But once still, it came through, and it is giving enormous amount of results. But if you see our role as designers. It is very limited, you know, in, in some sense, it was very important. Technology, we could br bring into the manufacturability, usability, and all that. Just you can see the, some of the, one of the biggest uh, innovation is to use of plastics, because it was itself very doubtable, 
not acceptable, how you can lock, and all kinds of problems were there. Then a live hinges in PP we cleverly used, though the product was in the Noril, the live hinges in PP. So there were innovations in making, delivering that. Then a simple mechanism which can come in one inch, you know, the whole thing, this has to open and close within that. All these were involved in that. So if you see the also the details, you hear whole team worked here, myself, Ravi Poya, Govind Rajan and all that. So there is a team work within the here itself, but we also work with BEL. So it is very important to work with a good organization which could follow up and execute for a long period. I think that is when the results come. So innovation gets recognized only at that time. So only one end is another process of training we can look at into. So, but if you see the general state of industry, what is happening in industry? See, consultant designers are not involved in conceptual stages most of the time. Only they are brought in late. Even voting machine, we came once the product was formed. Of course, certain amount of technologies is better that innovated, even before designers are there. Or if designers are from beginning, it can lead to quite different results. Then creative potentials of in-house designers are quite underutilized. We are talking about creating more institutes and more designers, but we are not talking about our designers who are going into industries and getting bored after five years. They are all frustrated. Many of them do not have a scope for a individual creativity. It is a part of that. It may be small, this thing. Industries have not yet created platforms for innovation. I think this is something which we need to think of. We need conducive structures for product innovations, what it should be. You know, this is something which we need to debate on. Each industry should have what can be the models. See, in IIT, for example, or in academics, you have so many things like sabbatical leave, this leave, that. There's so many freedoms to do things. But how many industries have such freedoms? How much time they give or this thing to regenerate the designers? Why not other engineers come into this? Again, Professor Atwankar also pointed something. Long back, with, uh, we were with TVS. We were doing a creativity workshop with R&D. So whole one week workshop, we said, why don't we develop some new ideas? No, we are also to do with product uh, production things. When the orders come, we don't have time and all that. But then I, we say, why can't we have some creative idea? You make a small team, dedicate, routinely allot it a creative uh, product, and let them work for six months let them give a, get a leave, then you rotate the team. So I'm sure in any given situation, if you have a will from the top, it is possible to introduce a, a structures where it can become conducive. One of the problems is seldom we are able to reach to the top people because none of our seminars top people will come. Okay, so these are the realities, you know, which we have to face. How do you reach? Either you going to media or you become famous or you go into power like San Pedro or then you say to the ministry. So how do we do? So this is something which we need to debate as designers and design teams. Then coming to innovation in unorganized sectors. This is something I will take by Ambukraft because my own experience. You have huge unorganized sectors and this is where many of the time we are talking about reaching the products to the rural people, down people. The problem is, we are only talking about selling these new ideas to the rural people. How will they buy? They do not have money. See, they do not have jobs. We are not talking about at all job creation. I don't know how many innovations are addressed about creating jobs. I think that should have been a top priority in this country. It's a billion people with so much of unemployment, so much of terrorism and what not coming. Why are, why are we not discussing about institutes to create jobs? This is, I think, a very important topic we must think of. So when it comes to the craft, our own history was that we had uh, several inputs. You know, we started long back, Jagruti, one project we got. Then an insight came that what is required is a actually lag Lack of organized production seems to be the key problem. Even today, it remains the problem for the craft. We had a UNDP project. We came to this. I'll just briefly to what happened. So we developed a tool project where we innovated. You know, major innovation was using the laser cutting. So laser cutting brought possibility of making with low investment tools. 
because this was not possible earlier. So the high technology helped us to make low investment. Then that was the important thing. Then validation workshops. We went through all the processes. In fact, now my company makes a mini toolkit because this is what reaches people. This is a low cost. It reaches a lot of people, which we can give through workshops. Now, we also included in this training and a full technology support. So we are giving as a package in this area because this will be found as the requirements. Now you can see the innovations in the mold technologies, this thing, then the education comes, craftsmen do not have certain education to absorb this. So the molds, the finishes, natural dye colors, this we give as a package and training. Now I introduce a coil technique which were taken from Thailand. There are several products which have come. Some now it is integrated with some with the student project. So you can see the beautiful products, which can be, everybody say, why don't we make, why don't we export, IKEA can buy, but who will make, who will produce, what are the structures available? We have still not addressed that. So this is where certain problems and conflicts I see. School education it actually demotes the traditional crafts. All craftsmen, children go to the schools and study, so they do not want to do the craft. The craftsman says, that my son should be like you, a professor, and he should learn English and not craft. Otherwise, he'll become a craftsman. So they don't want to be a craftsman. So we want them to be craftsmen, you know. So there is somewhere we have to understand these aspirations of people, what we are creating through education. In fact, policy changes are required even for raw material. There's a big problem in bamboo. Then government structures like NREGA, NREGA program, actually it gives 100 days employment with 150 rupees of sell money in Kerala we are seeing, whereas craftsmen hardly get 100 rupees normally. So what happens, once they are paid 150 rupees for 100 days, they don't want to work afterwards for less money. And there is an innovation required here. In fact, I have one idea that if take agencies, say like NGOs or whatever, you approve the agencies, give them that money to them. So let it be 50-50. You give 75 rupees, government gives, the agency gives 75 rupees. You make them employ for 200 days instead of 100 days. Now, one idea like this can become sustainable. Your productivity will increase, product cost will come down. But the government policies which are creating actually is destroying the craft. It is not possible. They are expecting more money, but it is not possible to make. So this is where the conflicts we are getting into. I think these are the issues to be addressed, and these innovations, how do you reach? Whether it is the minister, whom do you talk about? We don't have platforms. See, it is left to the individuals. If I have an idea, I keep telling to people, or this thing like that, I can talk in the seminar, but still, it's very, there are no channels to reach. This is where we need even innovation platforms at IIT. We should have think tanks to discuss about policies of the government, vet it properly, and even suggest, you know, advice to technology policies. We do not have anything like that, even design policies. All that, you should have platforms. New opportunities for design innovation, other is in, we can look at, this is another thing I'll touch it, school education, which had come. See, one is that we have been talking about many new things, technologies going, but the basic curriculum itself is at fault. So art, craft, design-based curriculum needs to be designed. This has to be brought up. I think a lot of content entry designers have to make, design has to make. I think unless that is done, all other products will become irrelevant. Then creative teaching learning platforms. This is an idea I've been talking about. You need to teach as an experiential education. See, we had taken one topic of symmetry I've been experimenting. It can be taught in many ways. It needs innovation in the process, process of teaching. So designers will have to know enough. Teachers also have to get involved. See, by using this simple two mirrors, it becomes so exciting for children to uh, learn symmetry. And we made them enact. So symmetry is also mirror. So one imitate each other. So it was so easy to draw children into an experiential learning. This is where the all other innovations, if they are just digital and all that, they will not address multiple intelligences. This is where we have to also look at as designers. What can we do? How we can combine? How we can, you know, this thing. See, the simple learning of symmetry, if you see, you can see the below Siddhan. This was IIT kids who are quite smart. When we ask their uh, names to see in the mirror, you can see there are some mistakes when it comes to you know, the, this thing, they were not able to. So then we realized it is not just knowing symmetry. When you say A, they all know a symmetry. 
But when it comes to a sustained visualization, that was lacking. You know, when four or five letters come, you need a patience. Then you see in the mirror, then you get more. So it is another level of learning through the physical things and doing. This is something which we need. Then another workshop where we did with a tan fraction game we created with tangram pieces. See, this is another thing, games, learning games, whether we can have games for learning. It's a powerful tool, tool, I think we need to address learning itself. Then the making teachers, teachers training is, how do you make them innovative? In fact, this is one the municipal school teachers who came, who were not artists, but they made things. You know, first time they experienced art, they experienced theater experience. These are very important. When in Inno Math workshop, when Atswankar had, we had a one workshop with the games, children. I think teachers were make toys, they found math challenges in toys. So we have to think of how they also get creative inputs. How do, how do designers interact in that? Either designers can be separate or design can be part of it. They can be also partly designers. We can be also partly teachers. So these mergers have to happen. I, I have my own initiative now. I am starting a website where it's called Aduko Maduko, where we'll be putting all our information open. See, other thing is like you need leadership. See, you'll have to take actions wherever you are convinced. So another, it can happen in IIT itself, is a center for experiential education. We have many places, many people are working, not only in IDC, in all departments. It can result into a combined places, you know. Then to address innovation in school educations, we can create a kind of platform. So for effective innovations, design needs to stretch its boundaries. This is a point which is coming again and again. We need to address, one is leadership, whether we take or leadership is required. Second, we have to address people. See, people in terms of their thinking. See, people are also powerful computers. I think we seem to forget that. It is unutilized, it is not harnessed properly. So that making people creative, I think making people innovative at all levels is a very important thing in the schools everywhere. I think we need to address. Then the processes in addition to products, then the policies, and finally the values which we need to. Thank you.